Welcome to the Rare History Channel. Alvin Karpus, a notorious name echoing through the annals of crime history. Dubbed public enemy number one, he was a formidable figure in the realm of organized crime during the infamous public enemy era of the 1930s. From daring heists to jailbreaks and an unexpected mentorship in prison, Karpus' life was nothing short of a thrilling crime novel. In this exploration, we unearth 13 shocking and rare facts about Alvin Karpus that paint an enthralling picture of one of America's most infamous criminals. Fact number 1. A desolate beginning in the depths of poverty. Born Alvin Francis Karpovich on August 10, 1907, Alvin Karpus emerged from humble beginnings in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. His childhood was marred by a life of grinding poverty, as his Lithuanian immigrant parents struggled to make ends meet in the New World. The biting winters of Montreal were unforgiving, and food was often scarce in the Karpovich household. Life was a brutal teacher, and these early experiences of hardship set the stage for Karpus' subsequent journey into the underworld. Number 2. The Streets as a Classroom, an Early Induction into Crime Alvin Karpus' descent into the world of crime was shockingly premature. As a 10-year-old boy, he found companionship among the rough street gangs that thrived in Montreal's back alleys. These young years were a kind of criminal apprenticeship for Karpus, a time when he was learning the tricks of the trade. By the time he reached his turbulent teenage years, he was already a hardened criminal, experienced in thieving and running from the police. His early life is a grim testament to how easily crime can ensnare those who have limited options. Number 3. Steering the Notorious Barker Karpus Gang in the gritty underworld of the 1930s, the Barker Karpus Gang was a name that struck fear in many hearts. Named after its leaders, Alvin Karpus and the notorious Barker brothers, the gang was infamous for their audacious kidnappings and the hefty ransom they demanded. Karpus was the mastermind behind many of these operations, demonstrating his knack for meticulous planning and ruthless execution. His role in the gang's operations raised his stature in the criminal world and solidified his notoriety. Number 4. The Elusive Prey of Melvin Purvis Melvin Purvis was a legendary FBI agent, known for his role in bringing down some of the most infamous gangsters of the time. Yet, when it came to Alvin Karpus, success eluded Purvis time and again. Karpus was always one step ahead, managing to slip out of Purvis' grasp at the last moment. This cat-and-mouse chase enhanced Karpus' reputation as a cunning and elusive criminal, one of the few who could repeatedly evade the formidable Purvis. The ongoing struggle between the two men added an intriguing layer of personal rivalry to their professional engagements. Number 5. The Puppeteer Behind Bold Kidnappings Alvin Karpus masterminded the high-profile kidnappings of two influential figures, William Hamm, a prosperous brewery owner, and Edward Bremer, a prominent banker and business executive. In both cases, the Barker Karpus gang demanded and received astronomical ransoms, amounting to hundreds of thousands of dollars, a fortune in the 1930s. These audacious crimes, fraught with danger and meticulous planning, splashed across national headlines, reinforcing Karpus' standing as the feared public enemy number one. Number 6. The Indomitable Inmate of Alcatraz. Captured in 1936, Karpus was sentenced to life imprisonment and found himself in the confines of Alcatraz, America's most notorious island prison. Known for housing the nation's most dangerous criminals, Alcatraz was reputedly escape-proof, an assertion that Karpus never challenged. Spending 26 long years behind its cold, damp walls, he became one of Alcatraz's longest-serving inmates, a grim reminder of his criminal past and the life he could never return to. Number 7. The Final Stand of the Public Enemy By the mid-1930s, the list of criminals labeled as public enemies by the FBI was rapidly depleting. Many had been captured, others killed, but Alvin Karpus, a criminal enigma, managed to evade law enforcement's clutches. This seeming invulnerability and defiance of the law spurred FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover to personally engage in the pursuit of Karpus. His relentless efforts eventually paid off in 1936 with Karpus' capture. Number 8. 
Hoover's singular prize, Carpus Capture. J. E. Edgar Hoover, the formidable and long-standing director of the FBI, led the charge in New Orleans to capture Carpus in 1936. Despite a lengthy career dedicated to upholding law and order, Carpus was the only trophy Hoover personally nabbed. The capture was more than just an arrest, it was a symbolic victory for the FBI, cementing its reputation as the guardian of law and order against the country's most dangerous criminals. The high-profile nature of Carpus' capture under Hoover's watch was a public relations triumph for the agency, enhancing its prestige and standing in the eyes of the American public. Number 9. Unlikely Inmates, Carpus and Capone. Within the intimidating walls of Alcatraz, Alvin Carpus crossed paths with another notorious name of the criminal world, Al Capone. The two infamous gangsters, albeit from different eras, were both residents of Alcatraz at the same time. Carpus provides an intriguing glimpse into their interaction in his autobiography. He depicted Capone, the infamous Chicago mob boss, as surprisingly overwhelmed by the harsh realities of Alcatraz. According to Carpus, the mobster, known for his ruthless command over his criminal empire, appeared out of his depth and struggled with the brutalities of life in the notorious prison. Number 10. The Unsettling Comradeship with Charles Manson. In an eerie twist of fate, Alvin Carpus found himself sharing the prison space with Charles Manson during the 1960s. At that time, Manson was a petty criminal, yet to gain his infamy as the leader of the murderous Manson family. Carpus recounts their interaction in his memoirs, indicating that Manson had shown a keen interest in music. In a chilling display of camaraderie, Carpus claimed to have taught Manson how to play the steel guitar during their shared sentence. This unlikely friendship provides a haunting glimpse into the intersection of two of America's most infamous criminals. Number 11. The Invisibility Trick. Despite being one of the most wanted men in America, Carpus had an uncanny ability to blend into the crowd. He would often alter his appearance by changing his hairstyle, wearing glasses, and even altering his fingerprints using acid. This invisibility enabled him to evade capture for years, underlining the audacious and elusive nature of his criminal career. The fact that one of the most notorious criminals could walk freely in society is truly a shocking reflection of his cunning and resourcefulness. Number 12. Life as an Author. After his release from prison in 1969, Carpus took to writing, detailing his criminal exploits and experiences in Alcatraz. His books, including Public Enemy No. 1 and On the Rock, 25 Years in Alcatraz, provide a rare, first-hand account of life as one of America's most wanted criminals and offer a unique glimpse into a bygone era of crime and punishment. Number 13. Life in Spain and Mysterious Death. In 1973, Carpus moved to Spain, where he lived until his death in 1979. The circumstances of his death remain shrouded in mystery. He was found dead in his apartment with no signs of foul play, and the official cause of death was ruled as natural causes. However, given his past and the number of enemies he'd made over his criminal career, rumors and conspiracy theories have inevitably swirled around his final days.